In this video, we are going to revise biology paper 2 of 2015. Now, for this one, we are just going to look at the first section, section A. Now, first question, figure 1.1 shows three different types of organisms labeled A, B, and C. Now, the first question, Roman number 1, identify the three organisms shown in figure 1.1 above. So, this question is asking us to find the names given to each organism. So let's look at the first organism. So whenever you see a diagram like this one, this is a rhizopus. Then organism B, this is an insect. Now, whenever you have an insect like this one, we can see that we have um, eight legs. So an insect with eight legs is a spider then for C whenever you have a diagram like this one this is a bacillus a bacillus is just an example of a bacteria now let's move on to Roman number two Classify the organisms identified in A1 above according to their kingdom. So the first one, we want to classify what kingdom does the rhizopus belongs to. So a rhizopus belongs to a fungi kingdom. Then for a spider, spider is an insect, so that is an media kingdom, it's an animal. Then for bacteria, bacteria belongs to Monera kingdom. So these are the kingdoms for each respectively. Now let's move on to B, Roman number one. Uh, states two organisms which might bring about decay of organic matter. So from the uh, organisms that we've mentioned, we want to look at the two that can make an organic matter to decay. So the first one, rhizopus, does that work? Rhizopus helps the organic matter to decay. Bacteria also helps uh, matter to decay. Now, let's look at uh, Roman number two of question B. Name one disease caused by organism A. So, the disease caused by rhizopus, one of it is a ringworm. Then we also have um, arthritis foot etc. Now, the other thing that I want to look at is uh, for bacteria, the word bacteria, this is the plural. This is the plural. Then if we are looking at for one, that is a bacterium. Please so take note of this in terms of our uh, as you are writing your answer so bacterium it's a single it's a single bacteria it's one then for bacteria we have uh, as many as possible so we don't add s to the word bacteria to make it plural we don't say bacteria so that is one clarity i wanted us to also have in mind as we are dealing with uh, words such as a bacteria now let's move on to uh, question two so question two, read figure 2.1 shows the structure of a mammalian sperm. So this structure here, this is a sperm cell. Now a sperm cell is a male sex cell produced by a male. And this also works during the process of fertilization. Now, we have been given this structure. The first question, question A, Roman number one, identify the parts labeled D, D, and E. So this part, we can try to 
this or party from here this is a tail then from here up to somewhere here we have what we call a head now for part d this one is known as acrosum so acrosum is just the party or there it is found on the outside uh, nucleus of the sperm cell and it contains enzymes that helps the sperm cell to penetrate through an ovum. Now for E, E we are looking at this is the nucleus. Then let's look at the question uh, Roman number two. Explain the function of the parts level F. So we are looking at the function of the tail. The tail is used for locomotion or we can just say the tail is used for the movement of the sperm cell from one position to another position. So after ejaculation, the sperm cell uses its tail to move from uh, the point of ejaculation to the point of where fertilization would take place. So we can say for movement, for movement, So for movement of the sperm cell, so it rotates like a rotor and due to that rotation, the sperm cell will move from one position to another position. This, you can also view this uh, tail, the, the type of movement produced by this tail of the sperm cell, you can picture how the, the snakes moves. So with that rotations produced by its tail, makes the sperm cell to move from one position to another position. Now let's look at uh, question B. What substance produced by the cervix enable the sperm to swim in the female reproductive tract? Now the sperm is just a cell. There are substances produced by the male party in which the sperm cell uh, swims. There are also substances produced by the female party in which the sperm cell Swims. Now, the part that we are interested in is the one produced by the cervix, which is the, the, the woman. So here we are dealing with the, it's a fluid. So we call this one as cervical mucus. So this is a liquid produced by a cervical a cervix that enables the sperm cell to swim. Now let's go to question C, Roman number one. Explain why only one sperm cell fertilizes the ovum. So let's have a picture. If this is an ovum, let's say we have maybe thousand or billions of uh, sperm cells approaching this ovum. Now the question is why should we only have one sperm cell to fertilize this? So the, 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 the importance of one sperm cell to fertilize the, the ovum, we want the, the zygote, or maybe we can say the fertilized egg, to have uh, only one set of chromosomes. We know that uh, for a person to be normal, he or she must have uh, one set of uh, chromosomes. So to make sure that uh, an individual has such kind of a pair of chromosomes, uh, one spell. I mean, one sperm must fertilize that ovum. So, we'll say to ensure to ensure that the offspring has only only one set of chromosome. Chromosome we are looking at for, for a female, we know that a female has XX chromosome, then for a male has XY. So to in order to have this pair 
of a uh, uh, chromosome for each individual only one sperm uh, cell must fertilize an ovum so if we have maybe if we have a condition where maybe two sperm cells if two sperm cells were to fertilize one one over we may have what we call a triploid where maybe we, we have a situation a person with three, three uh, chromosomes and this is a very bad condition now let's look at uh, Roman number two distinguish between a sperm and an ovum so the difference between the two is these are all the sex cells now one is produced by a male and the other one is produced by a female so say a sperm cell is a male sex cell Well, an ovum is a female sex cell. So the sperm is produced by a man, while the ovum is produced by a female. Now let's look at uh, uh, question E. Uh, Okay, so now we can move on to question 3, figure 3.1 shows the life cycle of a housefly. Now here we, we know that whenever we look at the life cycle, this uh, gives us the picture of how an organism develops into uh, how they reproduce and also how organisms make sure that the life continues to exist. So here we, we are looking at a complete metamorphosis and this has four stages. So the first stage is we can just consider our adult. Then we, we have the egg or eggs, the larva and pupa. Okay, so this is how the stages are evolved in a complete metamorphosis. Now, for those that may find it difficult to to put this in in order, you may you may uh, find it that you are able to remember these terms, but uh, you forget which uh, stage comes after maybe that stage. So, for you to remember how this stage comes, you can just look at uh, the first letter of each word. So you can see that we have a, then e, a o. And P. So the same way these uh, letters are arranged, that will help you to remember. So you can just use the alphabetical order. So this will help you to remember this in an exam. Now let's go to the first question. So question A, Roman number one, identify the stages labeled G and H. Since the, this G comes after adult, our G is eggs then for the lava lava is divided is subdivided into three stages the first stage we have this one first lava stage then this one second lava stage then this one is our third larval stage. Then after the third larval stage, therefore an organism uh, becomes a pupa. Then from the pupa, we go back to our adult. So now from there, let's look at the, our H. We can see that our H is the second larval stage. Okay, now let's move on to Roma number two. Explain the changes taking place during stage I. So at third level stage, what are the changes that occurs? So the changes that occurs includes the lava will burrow deep into the substance it is feed, feeding on. Then also the color changes. So we would say the lava burrow into 
into this substance. It is it is fading on then also its skin will darken. So this is what happens at stage uh, three of level. Now B, Roman one, which stage in figure 3.1 would be the most effective for eradicating houseflies? So if you want to get rid of housefly, which of these stages, which one of these will be effective? So for if you want to get uh, get rid of this stage three is the best stage since we can just spray a poisonous liquid onto the substance where we're expecting the lava to be so this we can say first we begin by lava then we can say it is easy it is easy to get To get rid of lava by spraying spraying a poisonous liquid on on the substance it is feeding on so the same substance the lava is feeding on is the same substance we can spray a liquid in order to eradicate uh, this housefly now we can go to roma number two using a named example describe the role of a housefly in disease transmission so if you look at the uh, housefly housefly is a vector and a vector according to biology is an organism that transmits a pathogen a pathogen is a microorganism that has the ability to cause a disease so a housefly does not cause diseases what it does is it, it transmits the organisms that causes it, that particular disease so if you are looking at the cholera cholera is caused by a bacteria so that bacterium that uh, brings cholera is transmitted by this housefly so therefore housefly is a vector so therefore we will just say cholera so cholera we can say is an infectious is an infectious disease disease which can be transmitted by a housefly then also if you if you look at the term an infectious infectious diseases are those that can be transmitted then non-infectious diseases are those that cannot be transmitted Okay, now let's move on to question four. Now question four, figure 4.1 shows the growth of a milka on Nishima. Okay, so we have this piece of Nishima, then we have been this, we have been given this diagram, the milka. The milka is an example of a rhizopus also. Now let's look at the first question, question A, Roman one, identify structure j so structure j this one this is a sporangium then explain how structure k obtains nutrients from the shimmer so it releases it it releases extracellular enzymes
that that works on the substrate so then the same structure k it will absorb nutrients so it will absorb nutrients from the this shimmer into the same organism now let's look at b the shimmer was flooded with iodine solution state color changes that would occur at l so l l here we can this l so we are expecting to have a blue blue blacky color then at m brown then give reasons for the color changes observed in b so the reason why at l we are expecting to have a blue black there at l we can see that t starch is there is present so that party or area consists of a starch now for structure m we can see that the, uh, the starch has been used by this mucus so there is no starch there and we are expecting the color of the iodine to remain the same so we would say at L starch is present is present then at M starch has been used has been used by the muca by the muca so therefore we can see that starch is absent so these are the reasons behind the color changes that we we can get from this uh, experiment now let's move on to question five so question five here we are dealing with a, a, a question from the genetics the first one question 5a state one sex linked disease so here we have hemophilia so diseases such as hemophilia sickle cell anemia red green color blindness these are some of the examples that are considered to be sex linked diseases now the second b what is meant by the term sex linked characteristics so these are characteristics or traits that are influenced by genes carried on the sexy chromosome so we can say these are so these are characteristics or traits influenced by genes carried on the sex chromosomes okay so that is the what is meant by sex linked uh, characteristics now let's look at question c using a genetic diagram and appropriate symbols explain how a man with normal eyesight married to a woman who is a carrier of the trait for color blindness can have a child who is color blind now here we have we have been given a, a condition of we can use any letters of our choice so since we are looking at color blindness let's use letter b so b capital letter b we use it for a normal then for small letter b we use that for the defect so this is what you do if you are choosing the letters for of your choice so the capital letter represents a normal then in the small letter represents a defect that you may have according to the question so let's look at the man 
So we have the man here. Then we also have this woman. Now we are, we are we know that the chromosomes for a man is XY, then for a woman is XC, X. Now we have been given the condition that the man is normal. So here we are going to expect the capital letter B. So the other reason that you need to have in mind or what you need to keep to memory is when you are looking at the man, only the X uh, chromosome carries the this characteristics, the sex risk characteristics. So the Y is too small, it doesn't occupy this sex linked characteristic. So you don't put anything on the Y part. Now for the woman, we are told the woman is a carrier. So since this lady is a carrier, one will be a capital letter, the other one will be a small letter. That's a condition. So if, if a woman is 100% okay, it's, it is written as like XBB, 100% okay. Then for a carrier, for a carrier, one letter is a capital letter, the other one is a small letter. Then if a woman is 100% sick, then we are going to have a small letter. So for a man, there is no conditions like a carrier. A man is either normal or sick. So then these are known as the genotypes of P1. So first parental generation from there. Let's see. So after separates, we have now gametes of first parental generation. Now let's cross. So you can see that here we have X, X. So we have, there is a chance of having a baby girl who is normal. So here we can see we have capital letter B and small letter. So this is a girl who is a carrier. Now let's look at this one. Okay, so we have a boy who is 100% normal. Then for this one, so this is now the patient. So this is how we can use a genetic diagram to explain how the this couple came i mean got a son who is uh, who has this blindness color so now that's it for this video if you are new to this channel consider subscribing help help me to grow this channel thanks for watching